Infinite banking or velocity banking? What's the difference and which is best for you? Do you need it at all? How do you understand the nuances between them and ultimately who is it best for? This video, we are gonna get into all of that. I've got my business partner, Sebastian Boyer, who also runs a great YouTube channel uh, known as The Approved Guy on YouTube. We're gonna be going through all the nuances between utilizing infinite banking policies or just cash value life insurance on how to eliminate debt, potentially where it works, where it doesn't. And then we're gonna also talk about velocity banking and how uh, you can utilize velocity banking to accelerate your debt pay down. And we're gonna talk about the correlation between the two and the differences between the two. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. That way you're notified every time I launch a new video. We've got videos like this coming out every single day. Well, let's get into it. Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris with Life 180, and I am here with Sebastian Boyer. He is the approved guy on YouTube, and he is also uh, one, of the, one of the coaches on my team. I, I lean on uh, Sebastian a lot when it comes to business credit, when it comes to personal credit, when it comes to velocity banking and all sorts of other elements when it comes to money, credit, like that, that, that world, right? That's not my space. And so Sebastian is one of the best in the business. And so before we get into anything else, I'll tell y'all, go check his uh, YouTube account out. His, uh, all the information is going to be down in the, in the description below. I'll put a link. You can just click on it. Go follow him if you're looking uh, at rebuilding your credit, if you're looking at doing, honestly, anything to do uh, with learning about credit debt, uh, credit cards, lines of credit, business credit, personal stuff. He's, he's the dude to follow. And so Sebastian, awesome having you here, man. Thanks for having me, Chris. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, so it, it's a little weird. My camera's here and you're over here, so I'm gonna find myself looking back and forth. But um, you know, here's, here's the deal. Um, I'm gonna be totally straight with everybody. I am not a velocity banking expert. Um, you know, I am a life insurance expert. Um, you know, velocity, I always kind of tell people like velocity banking is something I've never really thought much about because I've never had to personally think about it or worry about it or anything of that nature. And I've always been kind of in the creation space and I've, I've, I've never spent a lot of time thinking about the debt side of things. Now, I have some opinions when it comes to utilizing life insurance for debt elimination. Um, I think there's some really good ways and, and, and ways to think about um, the uh, utilizing life insurance for debt elimination. But really what I thought would be best is to to bring you on um, because you're the expert at the velocity banking stuff. You're like a certified uh, velocity banking expert. Is that accurate? Or how would I, how would I phrase that? I don't, I don't think there's a designation yet. <laughs> well, why not? Let's yeah. make one. But, but yeah, you know, um, you know, it, it comes down to experience and, you know, just being a, a good student of the craft. Okay. Um, and yeah. uh, we're all on a journey and um, yeah. you know, as time goes, things change in terms of products and in terms of mm -hmm. what's available and how and and how you you know how you uh, right. practice your your art right and and um, mm -hmm. that's that's what it boils down to you know I'm a practitioner oh. I would say that mm -hmm. I'd like to I would prefer to say I'm a velocity bank, banking practitioner um, okay, and um, and um, yeah you know and um, I've been mentored Love and it. taught by some of the best in the business. Love it. Love it. Yeah. And, and that's amazing. So, so why don't we do this then? I'd love to just kind of have you, uh, you know, people hear from me all the time. So let's, let's give them a little something different. And if you could like, let's talk about infinite banking. And I don't even want to use that phrase if we don't have to, I mean, we use it cause it's marketing and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's just properly designed cash value, life insurance, whole life insurance, specifically not index universal life talking about whole life insurance, properly designed to have uh, high liquidity um, up, up front, and then leveraging that to help pay down debt, mm -hmm. uh, figuring out where that works, where it doesn't. We can talk about all the different nuances there. Um, but before we get into it, I, I wanna hear your, your take on all that. And then I wanna hear uh, about the benefits of velocity banking and maybe hear your description on what makes the two different and how one can support the other, if at all. Sure, sure. So, so first, I, I, I think that um, I, I personally would lean towards leveraging a high cash, high, high cash value line of credit. Um, let me just say that again. I personally would lean towards using a high cash value line of credit um, because of the opportunity uh, loss that you, you, you risk if you mm -hmm. start later, right? 
Um, mm -hmm. So you may be able to get out of debt sooner by practicing velocity banking or even mm -hmm. some other debt elimination <clears throat> strategies in terms of eliminating debt. But then over a span of 10, 15, 20 years, when you look at the that the the growth of a of a cash value high cash value policy, um, you're gonna lose out on that growth if you yeah. spend the first five or seven or ten years focusing on getting out of debt first, and then you're say to your okay, let me let me pay off these debts, take ten years to do that, and then I'll start putting money into a life insurance policy. And and I think the reason people approach it that way is because they don't see the life insurance the way you and I do, they don't mm -hmm. see it. We know they they are looking at it as, as an investment strategy, yeah, versus yeah. a strategic saving strategy, right? And so because you know we see it, I see it as a strategic saving strategy. For me, um, I would always want to put that first because I don't want to lose out on that opportunity of the growth of yeah. that policy over the next five yeah. to ten years, right? And then from that policy do everything else, whether it's, you know, velocity banking, um, whether it's uh, investing in the market or yep. my business, real estate, yep. whatever it is I'm gonna, I want to do. I, you know, and again, that's my opinion. I, I may be biased because, but yeah. I think my biasness is based on truly understanding the functionality and the power of yeah. a, a properly designed high cash value policy. Well, let's let's talk about that for a second. You know, I, I'm a big believer and I talk about it on the channel all the time that nobody should do anything that's not in alignment with your values and beliefs. You know, so your your um, understanding and, and the way you would execute personally is based on your values, your beliefs, your level of knowledge and expertise and what you understand. Right. Um, and 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 from that perspective, you know, I think the value of this video is to really break this down. Right. Like and to really talk about because if you have a lot of debt, you basically have two, well, I guess several options, but the two most efficient options are going to be basically what we're talking about, right? right? And and if you want some of the faster ways to pay off debt, velocity banking is going to be the way to do it, right? Like if you want, um, you know, to think maybe a little bit more long term and, and, and take other elements of your financial needs uh, into consideration and financial goals and objectives from a long term perspective, maybe it's worth delaying paying off some debt as fast as possible. Um, and, and utilizing a whole life policy because it's going to add a lot more benefits on later down the road. Right. And right. so it's, it's not that there's a right answer, right? Like right. if you look at it, a spreadsheet, and I think it's really important to understand because I think a lot of people will tell you that utilizing a whole life insurance to pay off debt is the most efficient way to do it. Right. Well, efficient from my perspective always comes from the, like, financial efficiency and is it going to pay it down mathematically faster? And the answer is that's not true. Right. Like a whole life policy is always going to come with a little bit of a delay paying off the debt unless you have a lump sum of money that you could put into a policy, borrow against, leverage, and and use that as kind of like an right. accelerator for the for the velocity banking, like right, like which you'll talk about. Yeah. But for most people, like let's face it, if you have a lot of debt, you probably don't have a lot of money sitting around like, right. looking to deploy for the debt. Yeah. So there's a reason you're in debt, right? Like, so I, I have seen it where people have it in that mm -hmm. scenario, but it's, it's, it's a rare, it's a rare lot, right? right. Like where people are in right. that position. And so, um, so yeah, I think that's, that's key to understand is it's an art form, not a science. I always kind of say life doesn't exist on a spreadsheet, right? Like, right. so it's one thing to spreadsheet it out and be like, all right, velocity banking is going to pay it down faster. And that's yeah. great. And if that's where your values and beliefs are, and that's what you want, right. then get a convertible term insurance policy, lock in your insurance, keep your expenses for your insurance as low as possible, but lock mm -hmm. in your ability to do it down the road, implement velocity banking, execute, move forward, right? Exactly. Like, and then get the policy. And, but, and that's from a, a debt elimination expediency perspective. But Correct. if you're, if you want to think a little bit more creatively and outside the box and long term, and you know, thinking about like, hey, I mean, the one downside to it is to 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 not doing the insurance up front is like, if it takes you 10, 12 years, like you're going to be 10, 12 years older, and right. insurance is going to be more. There's there's extra costs associated with that. And so to make a full spectrum picture, it's not just about looking at the spreadsheet. It's about looking at 
the lifetime uh, like ramifications and right, benefits. Right. And I've, I've like, heard you at, say on your other videos that not yeah. you know not only is it okay ten years later you've aged ten yeah. years right, but yeah. let's yeah. just talk about a week later. What could happen uh-huh. between now and next week? You know what yeah. I mean? Um, 100%. And so there, there's there's that, there's that a risk of not taking mm-hmm. action where mm-hmm. you can become uninsurable, right? Sure. Life yeah. can happen and you become uninsurable. 100%. And, and from that perspective, that's why no matter which decision you make, if you're kind of on teetering on the edge of thinking about velocity banking or utilizing like a banking policy, uh, to be able to help accelerate debt pay down. I would say no matter what, if you choose a velocity banking route and you want to delay the whole life insurance side, absolutely get a, a convertible term policy to lock in your insurability and to cover your human life value, right? Like I think that's that's a an absolute principle that I think everybody should do. And, you know, whether it's you're working with Sebastian or whether you're working with another uh, velocity banking person or, or somebody who's helping with debt, the overriding principle is get your human life value covered with the convertible yeah. term. And that locks in your ability to execute down the road. And it, the costs are negligible compared to the benefit. hundred percent. hundred percent. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, so now get into it for me. I, I just kind of gave my little rant, but like, yeah. t- talk to me about like your perspective on, on, on all this, where's the right fit? Who's it good for? Who's it not good for? What are the, some of the great things and misrepresentations that I'm just going to let you roll? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, um, number one, the, the most important thing is that, you know, when, when, when I'm speaking to a client, someone who's, you know, wanting to get out of debt, they're looking to eliminate debt and they're also looking to build wealth because at the end of the day, you know, we're all looking to grow and improve our finances and, and become financially free. Right or debt free, and uh-huh. um, you know, live in a in a place where we have financial freedom, right? Uh-huh. Um, and so there there's there's two perspectives. One is you know focus on just eliminating debt only, right? Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Based on what you have, what you're working with, and and then the other is you know focus on uh-huh. increasing income, right? And uh-huh. you know I'm a strong believer in both, right? How can we become yeah. more efficient in the debt that you currently have, right? And that's not that's not just your debt, but that's also your living expenses. You know, yeah. How many nights a week are you eating out, right? If you're if you're on a budget and you have very little cash flow, well, how can we increase cash flow, right? Yeah. So the first yeah. thing we need to do is we le- we need to really look at your numbers. What are your four major numbers, right? And a lot of times, first of all, most people don't even know what those four numbers are, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what are the four numbers? And then to, to then tell you or for you to know, you know, what do they actually translate to, right? So your yeah. four numbers are going to be um, your number one is, is your income, right? Okay. Then it's yeah. going to be your, your actual debt and your, you know, your, your cost of debt, your monthly payments on the debt, right? Mm-hmm. Then your mm-hmm. expenses and then what's left over at the end of each month is your cash flow, right? Mm-hmm. So those are your four numbers, right? So that now that we know what the four numbers are, then we have to, the, you know, lay out that debt, lay out those expenses. And in just doing that, just just in doing that one action and step, we can quickly mm-hmm. identify where you're bleeding. Where yeah. are you wasting? Where are you being inefficient? How, yeah. you know, instead of, um, you know, going to Starbucks every day, right? Yeah, <laughs> who would do that? Yeah, but look, you know, you could buy a coffee machine that costs three hundred dollars, and you think, "Oh my gosh, that's a crazy! That's a that's an expensive coffee machine." But if you add up how much money you spend going to Starbucks every single day, right, you might be spending mm-hmm. three thousand dollars a year. I mean, if we run the numbers, right. Mm-hmm. So you know, invest in a really good coffee machine and good quality coffee, and save money. Be more efficient with your money. If instead of eating out every day, how many yeah. uh, subscriptions do you have a membership to? Right. Yeah. So a lot yeah. of us have, you know, and sometimes they're automatic. Like I, I have Roku. Right. And before I know it, I'm paying for, you know, Disney. I'm paying for, you know, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm paying for yeah. this. I'm paying for that. And, I know. I and use just YouTube adds TV and it just like, and, you know, I see, I remember, uh, you know, the World Cup happened. Right. Like, yeah. 
World Cup is coming on is like, yeah, just subscribe to 4K and get World Cup, you know, for free, you know, the whole time. And I was like, my son was like dying to watch a World Cup. So I'm like, I'll upgrade to the 4K package. It's a free 30 days. Like, let's do it. And then like four months later, I'm like, oh, crap, I'm still paying $15 a month for this 4K, you know, package. And I don't I don't care. You know, yeah. I forgot to cancel it. So it cost me like, you know, whatever, 60 bucks in just wasted money wasted for something money. I had no value of whatsoever, you know. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes we're blind to it, yeah. but yeah. yeah. So the first thing is to, to really know, know those numbers, lay it all out. We look at it together. We really just figure out, okay, where can we be more efficient? Where can, you know, and, and just doing that, you might uncover hundreds of dollars of cash yeah. flow that you didn't even realize you had to work with. Right. Well, what is it? Is it Peter Drucker? I think who said like anything measured improves. Right. And it's like, this is one of those things. If you if you know these four numbers and you really measure the inflow and outflow of your capital, uh, and you and you focus on running your life kind of like a business would look at their inflow and outflow of capital, and you think about it that way, your efficiency in your personal financial world is going to improve. Like you're yeah. going to find enhancements. There's no way around it. Simply yeah. by knowing and measuring what you have going on. Hundred percent. And and you know one yeah. of my mentors told me once. Um, and I live by this, that if you don't have a purpose for a dollar, your dollar has ah. a purpose for you. Yep. So if you don't have a designation for every single dollar that comes into your personal economy, mm. um, chances are you're not going to know where or how it got spent, but it's going to get mm. spent. It's going to get spent because mm -hmm. you don't have a designation mm -hmm. or a purpose for it. But totally. when you designate a purpose for every dollar, then mm. you may have a, a, a itch or a desire to spend that dollar somewhere because life happens and we go out and we're living and, oh, I want to buy that. But wait a minute, that's yeah. designated for X, Y, Z. No, I'm not going to touch Yeah. That, right? If you don't have an allocation for it, when something comes up and you want to go out to a party with your friends, all right, I got free money. There's, yeah. there's no, because no there's need no, for this right there's here. No, Let's just go it do doesn't it. have a, a, a purpose. Uh -huh. right? So just like, like we as that. humans should have purpose, we want to assign great. a purpose to every dollar, right? I love it. So, so that's Great. that. That would be like the starting point, Chris. Okay. I think is is yeah. that, and just that by itself is going to help oh, yeah. us really be more gold. efficient, right? Yeah, I love because it. Because ultimately, um, it's all about cash flow, right? It's Amen. it's all about finding it, creating it, preserving yeah. it, right? And love it. Love it. and so you know, a lot of times when we're, when folks are in debt, um, they are feeling a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of worry about um, just paying the bills, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it becomes, um, you know, the, the idea of cash flow is just like far off. It's something in the distant. Um, but again, let's let's yeah. find out how can we create it. Um, so maybe you need to get a second job, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to, you know, create a side hustle and, you know, start yeah. creating some extra income. So we got to increase income. Totally decrease expenses, find and create more cash flow. That's step one. Um, yeah. And then from there, we have to, again, based on the person, the individual, figure out, you know, what are your values? What what matters to you? What are your goals, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. You know, because you might be a business owner and it might make more sense for you to allocate and direct cash flow back into the business where mm -hmm. you can 10X your income and then redirect mm -hmm. that back to pay off the debt a few months later. Right. Yeah. But yeah. if you're not a business owner or you don't have that method of, of generating revenue where you're confident that you can do that, then it might be a safer way for you to to preserve that money and to allocate it in a, in a safer way until you are ready to start doing your investments in whatever you want to do. Right. Um, yeah. And again, totally. you know, that's why, you know, I just love the, the a high cash value whole life insurance policy. Because it serves yeah. as an emergency fund, mm -hmm. it serves as an opportunity fund, a retirement mm -hmm. fund, and a legacy fund, right? So, so yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. So, give me, give me the argument because I mean, I think we'll both agree that mathematically speaking, on a mm -hmm. spreadsheet, you know, it, it, if you were just looking at it, being like, all right, thinking myopically about debt elimination, then it doesn't make sense to do a whole life policy immediately, right? It makes sense to do a convertible term, right, and then do the velocity banking side of things and then you know freeing up your 
cash flow and then doing a, a whole life policy after the fact, converting the term policy. Give me the argument like of, of like, you know, sell me, pitch me uh, based on your values. I mean, I'm going to agree with you, but like, so I'm going to be an easy sell for you, but um, <laughs> like on, on why, why, um, you know, uh, a whole life policy early may make sense. You just talked about it a little yeah. bit, but I want, I want a more concise um, kind of understanding and elaborate uh, explanation of like all the reasons that a person would think about it to solve the different needs they have. Because like when we're focusing just on velocity banking, that's only addressing one of our financial needs. How would starting with a whole life policy, not just work towards that one need, but solve other needs as well. Right. So first I would say that strategically, why, why not do both things at the same time? Number one, okay, if we can, enough. right? Because we can't, sure. you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, now it just, again, it depends on the individual and how much cash flow they're working with, right? Mm -hmm. um, if mm -hmm. you barely have enough cash flow to, you know, fund a policy, mm -hmm. then a it's a problem because it's going to take you four years to build up enough cash value to borrow, right? But that's where you were saying the need to create more cash flow and have a side hustle or do something of that nature is where that comes in. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because that's the key. We need to have that cash flow to fund the policy yeah. to be able to take the policy loan and, and leverage that into the business or into paying off the debt. Right. Yeah. So yeah. perhaps we start with a smaller policy, something on a minimal level, just so that we mm -hmm. can lock it in. Like you said, a term convertible mm -hmm. term writer uh, policy. Mm -hmm. um, or even a whole life policy, but just on a smaller scale, something just yeah, to kind yeah. of get the, your feet wet and start practicing the strategy, get familiar with it, and and start building on it. Um, totally. You know, with some of the carriers that you know are out there, you know, they're they're very flexible in terms of mm. the uh, the uh, paid up additions and the cash value that you could put in. So um, the thing is that if you're, I guess let's if if I could, I guess take a step back. And really just yeah, explain the the debt strategies that are available. Like what's okay, cool. like how how can we get out of debt? Like so let's take sure. let's put infinite banking to the side for a minute okay. and then just look at that. I, I actually prepared something, so I'll, All right, let's do I'll it. use a, a a slide pro uh show presentation to uh I love it. show us that. I love it. All right, Get tell it. me if you see uh my screen. I see it. Debt elimination strategies. Here we go. You guys are in for a treat. <laughs> so, so the the most common uh, method of eliminating debt that we're all very familiar with is going to be what's called um, the debt snowball method, right? But, but again, mm. before we even do that, again, we must start with knowing our four major numbers. So, just to repeat that one more time, your four major numbers is going to be knowing what is your debt, and and what the the common mistake a lot of people make, Chris, is they mix their debt and their expenses together. Mm, and they don't separate. Yeah. It's it, that's a that's yeah. one line on their on their um, list of of debts and expenses. But separate that mm -hmm. because the debts have a have an end date. Eventually, you'll pay them off. Expenses mm -hmm. don't. Right. It's like They're fixed overhead in a business. Food. Say again. Yeah. It's like fixed overhead in a business. Is exactly. What that is food. Yeah. Gas. You know. Yeah. The light yeah. bill. You know. The, yeah. These things are always going to be there. You're not going to get away from them. They're just going to, they're always going to be there. Yeah. These are expenses. The yep. debts, yep. those are going to be credit cards, the mortgage, the car payment. Eventually, you're going to pay those off, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So we want to separate them. Mm -hmm. Income, and then we're going to uh, map that out so we can identify what is the cash flow, which is what's left. So that's, again, number one, step one is our four major numbers. And, you know, we do have a workbook that we can provide to clients so that they can, um, Put those numbers together so that we can work through that with them mm. now once you know that then you have to figure out what are your which strategy are you going to implement so um, the most popular strategy um and this was created by you know one of our favorite people dave ramsey right and yep. this is yep. this is listen yep. on a fundamental level on a basic yeah. very fundamental level for someone who is a credit addict right mm -hmm. and i'm dead serious like if you're a credit addict, then you should not be, you know, messing around with credit. Stay away from it. Right. 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 Um, right. 
And so that snowball would be a good place to start. The, the Can I ask you a question on this? Sure. Because it's something I don't know the answer to, and I should know the answer to it, I think. Um, you know, so when we look at the debt snowball, one of the, one of the challenges I've always had with the debt snowball is the idea that you want to pay off the smallest debt first, first. And I understand the the psychology behind that between, you know, because it's like, okay, have success, have progress, right? Like eliminated debt, feel like you've accomplished something, right? But sometimes the smaller debts are some of the lower interest rate payments, you know, and maybe, you know, it, it's not the most efficient way to go from a mathematical perspective. So we just got done talking with infinite banking versus velocity banking and utilizing whole life. Versus, it, it, life doesn't exist on a spreadsheet, right? So it's sometimes there's value behind, you know, just having that accomplishment and like keeping your momentum going and keeping, you know, you, you uh, committed to progress, right? Like, right. like progress is what every human being needs in life to be fulfilled. Like, I feel like that we all need a certain element of progress. Um, that said, from a credit perspective, is there a benefit to rebuilding your score by paying off the smaller debts first because you're actually eliminating debts and clearing up accounts and all that stuff? Does that actually help your score go up faster by paying smaller balances off first? Even if Probably it's not, not as financially no. efficient? No, no, it doesn't. No, not at okay. all. So as far as credit is concerned, um, technically loans, lines of credit, mm -hmm. As long as you're paying those bills on time, the okay. the weight of of a balance on a on a debt on a loan is not going to dramatically impact your credit score. As long as you're paying okay. it on time. So one thing that people have to understand about credit, and is that credit is driven. Your credit score is driven by only what's mm -hmm. active on your credit report. Got it. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. if you don't have a loan, you don't have credit. Mm -hmm. Right. So to have credit, yeah, you have to have debt. Right. Yeah. So having debt on your credit is actually a good thing. Right. It's just how do you handle that debt? How do you take care of it? Uh, right. And that alone right there, though, doesn't that show you the problem with our country and the way that we like look and value money is like the system is set up to like get you addicted to this stuff. Yeah. Right. And if like, you don't know if, if you don't, it's a game in a sense. Yeah. Right. If you don't, every game has rules. Uh -huh. If you don't know mm -hmm. the rules of the game, then you really, you're not playing the game. Yeah. You're just being yeah. hustled, you know? And unfortunately, yeah. a lot of folks, yeah, yeah. a lot of us are being hustled. So check, check this out. Here's what I've seen many, many times. I've seen many people who made the wrong decision in paying off a loan, like a car loan or even a student loan, mm -hmm. under yeah. the assumption that that was a good move strategically for their credit profile, right? Mm -hmm. So on Friday... That credit score was 780. They paid that loan off a week ago. On Monday, it reported to the credit bureau that the loan is a zero balance and it's a closed account. Okay. Guess what happened to the credit score? Does it go down because they don't have that line of credit open now? And it's no and... longer an active account. So, but wouldn't it doesn't it doesn't help your account that it showed your credit worthiness by going through a term of a auto loan and that you were a responsible human being and paid it off as like long that as that account is no active, credit for that as long as that account is active and you're actively paying towards it so yes. the answer is no nope. so the answer is no as soon as you the pay it off no, because if you a... get to if you get to conclusion of it and have actually fulfilled your obligation of paying it off you get on it your, doesn't help you as far as your you? credit score is concerned you do not get a reward and a, there's no benefit to that on your credit score now Obviously, that's going to impact your debt to income ratio. Sure. Right. Yeah, so when you're trying to apply for another loan, that's another variable to, to look at is your DTI. But okay. as far as your credit score. So this is why anything that's a revolving account, which mm -hmm. is any kind of a line of credit, credit cards are so yeah. powerful for your credit. Because as long as you pay them on time yeah. and you're responsible, mm -hmm. then they're never going to go away. They're going to stay on your mm -hmm. credit forever. So you can have mm -hmm. a credit card for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. The longer mm -hmm. that credit is on your credit report is the more uh, strength and more uh, the stronger your credit profile is, right? Yeah. So that's uh -huh. where if based on your question earlier is, yeah. you know, is paying off the lowest debt necessarily the best move for your credit? And the answer is no, because okay. 
Um, if you really want to impact your credit score, then what you really want to do is focus on your high balance credit cards. Okay, so if that's the case, the debt snowball is actually not good. Not for because not, not for the purpose of building credit scores, right? Okay. So let me give you an example. So sometimes we have that's a, a video situation. on its own, by the way, bro. That's a video on its own. Like say that again. Like we the world that's a video on its own because the world needs to know that. Like if you're trying to if you're trying to get out of debt, you're probably trying to rebuild your credit score to some capacity. Fair enough. Most cases. So if you're going to do it, you probably want to pay down your debt in the most efficient way to not just pay off your debt, but pay off your credit score. And I understand the psychology of wanting to eliminate debts and be uh, fulfilled and have progress. But I would encourage you, instead of thinking about how do I have these paid off accounts be my progress, to look at your credit score improvement as being your progress as right. you're paying off your debt. Okay. So keep but going. then again, Sorry. that also just, then goes back to like, what are your values? Because if you're if you're coming from the school of thought that says that credit is evil and credit is bad and you should never use credit for anything and you should pay cash for everything, um, then you know I guess they're you know cut up all your credit cards and you know that's what some people teach, right? Don't use credit, right? Credit's a yes. bad thing. And like yes. I, I started, remember I said if you're a oh. credit addict, right? Sure. Which and that's that's also where you have to know yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like, look, mm -hmm. I can I can go to a bar or a party and I can have a drink, maybe two. Mm -hmm. I'm good, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. I know folks, mm -hmm. they can't do that, right? Because one leads yep. to twenty, right? Yeah, yeah and yeah, that's sure. a problem, right? So you have yeah. to know yourself, right? Yeah. If you're mm -hmm. a credit addict and you can't handle it, as soon as you get access to credit, that's going to be you're going shopping, you're going to the casino, you're, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you're, yeah, yeah, you're using the credit irresponsibly and not mm -hmm. wisely, then no, right? But if you leverage yeah. credit properly, look, you can create another stream of income from credit that's mm -hmm. tax-free based on the rewards points and cashback points. Do you know that's cash-free? That's tax-free? The rewards points, yeah. cashback and travel points, it's tax-free, yeah. right? If you leverage credit properly, credit cards, you can literally mm -hmm. pay for expenses like groceries, gas, things that you have, you know, regular what? daily expenses on. Yeah. Pay it right back, rack up those points, avoid mm -hmm. all the interest because you're not let you're not you're not sitting on the yeah. balance, right? Yeah. So you're not using mm -hmm. the credit to pay for stuff you can't afford. You're using the all credit right. to pay for stuff you can afford, and then you're paying it right back. That's a want... velocity banking yeah. trick right there, right? Okay. To generate that. So I want to. I want to use. I want to use this as a free coaching moment um, because I'm dealing with this right now. So we okay. have our, our our credit card, right? And it's got, um, you know, it's a one percent cash back card. This one card, and uh, we've got, I don't know, it's like a hundred fifty seven thousand points on it or something of that nature, right? It's like it's it's like I think so. I think it's like fifteen hundred twenty seven dollars of of like cash that we could use, or it could be used for travel. You could buy. Um, gift cards with it. You could do all these things, right? And if you buy gift cards, it gives you like a 10% bonus at places like Best Buy. So I thought about like, I want to get the new podcast set up with the road stuff and like whatever. But I'm like, if I use these points for that, I don't think it goes, it's not a business expense. And so I don't get to expense it. But if I use it to pay off my credit card balance or like whatever, how, how does that work? Right? Like, cause from a, cause it's not, it, you don't, have to pay taxes on it but like how do you use it to pay down your credit card balance is it like a double win if i use that to pay down my credit card balance i don't have to pay taxes on the fifteen hundred dollars right so the you're talking about from the rewards point so at yeah. the end of the day so are you talking about a personal card or a business card a business card uh, a business card yeah so I, I think that just boils down to what kind of card it is and how you're going to use it so if it's a business card and you're you're using the the points or you're using the cash back to just pay towards the balance. Yeah, then that's what I'm thinking about. That's a win. That's a good. That's a good. Strategy. It's a double bonus. So I could go buy uh, my podcast equipment and then use the points that I have going into it, and I'd be able to write off the expense of the podcast equipment, and I'd pay for it with completely tax free benefit. Correct, guys. Do you not see that? That's amazing. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep going. So Sorry. I call I that. Derailed, I call that the, powerful. That's I call powerful. that the compound credit effect. 
Aha, nice. I love it. Yeah, that's the compound credit effect. It's the power of leveraging credit cards mm -hmm. properly, which means mm -hmm. that you don't buy it, you don't use it to pay for stuff you can't afford. You use it to pay for stuff you can afford, and then you immediately leverage the points or your cash to pay that credit card off. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Don't sit on the Eat balance. That, Dave Ramsey. Yeah, but but hey, the thing is that see, Dave <laughs> Ramsey's audience. The thing I, I don't want to knock him because see his audience primarily, oh, primarily are going to be people who are drowning in credit card debt. They are credit addicts, right? They are yeah, people who really should cut up their credit cards, right? Because sure. they don't sure. have that discipline, right? Um, to to manage it, to 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 handle the debt, to to manage. It. So you have um, to know yourself. That's where you know we I, you gotta know who you are as a person and just face the facts, face the truth. And maybe you're gonna get better as time goes. You're gonna become more responsible, more disciplined. Um, but it's but it's not for so velocity banking is not for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. uh, credit card, um, the compound credit effect strategy is not for everybody. It's for people who mm -hmm. can be disciplined and understand the art of leveraging versus using debt irresponsibly just to pay for stuff you can't afford, right? Right. Um, yep. And so just to kind of put a capstone on the, the statement as, or the topic as far as um, paying down debts to build your credit, right? So yeah. ideally, you want your credit card balances to be, as far as having the highest credit score, right, to be under kind of 30%. Yeah. Under 30%, right? Now, here's the thing. If you're going to leverage credit, let's say you tap into 70% of that credit for investing in your business or to, to do something strategically that, you know, okay, let's say you get a credit card, yeah. a, a, a $30,000 business credit card with a 0% interest mm -hmm. promotion for 12 months. And you're mm -hmm. going to leverage 70% of that card. That's a high balance, right? Well, it's in the mm -hmm. business name, so it doesn't show up on the personal credit. So it's not going to affect your personal credit at all, right? Unless it's, so, unless it's guaranteed. No. Or is it just in the, no, not even? So nine, all of the business credit cards are guaranteed. They're personally guaranteed. They just don't show up on your personal credit. There's, there's one or two of them yeah. that will show up on your personal credit. Most of them don't. Personal okay. credit cards, if, you're, if you have no choice, if you're not a business owner and you're just leveraging personal credit because you mm -hmm. can get – 12 to 24 months on the personal credit card side as well, right? Uh -huh. And you're going to leverage uh -huh. that for something on the personal side. You know, 0% uh -huh. interest. That's great. That's that's wonderful, right? You're going to get rewards uh -huh. points, cashback points on the personal side, right? So strategically, you're going to leverage that. But in the interim, you have high utilization, so your scores are going to take a dip. But it's not negative. Uh -huh. It's not derogatory. It's not a late payment, collections, bankruptcy. Right. So it's not something that stays on your credit for seven years, right? Got it. It's just a real-time reflection of your utilization. You pay that mm -hmm. down next month. Once it updates with the credit bureaus, scores go right back up. Shoot back up. Leverage it again, scores go back down. So the point mm -hmm. here is to be strategic in terms of timing mm -hmm. and leveraging. Knowing Got it. in advance what your profile looks like, your credit profile. Mm -hmm. And there's tools mm -hmm. available um, and we could put, you know, I'll give you the links and we can put them on the description yeah. where you can yeah, verify your credit profile, see what your credit scores look like. Um, mm -hmm. and not just your scores, but you can look at your utilization on each card, make mm -hmm. sure that it's where it needs to be. So before you go apply for that mortgage or that car or that business line of credit or personal line of credit, take, mm -hmm. take a moment to verify and look at your credit. Unfortunately, what most of us do, Chris, is... We let the bank or the lender tell us what our credit looks like, mm, right? Mm -hmm, and and mm -hmm. at that point, it's too late, right? Yeah. Because had I had I gotten either a consultation from an expert who could help me position my credit properly, or if I knew how to do that myself, right, then I mm -hmm. could prepare my profile and I could go to the bank or to the car company or whoever, and I could say, listen, I know exactly what my credit looks like, right? I know you don't have to tell me. I know how many inquiries mm -hmm. I have. I know what my utilization is. I know what my scores are, right? So I know what I can qualify for, right? So mm -hmm. they still have to run my credit, right? But yeah, I yeah, have they'll have to go. A lot much more authority and control. Yeah, you got like a crystal ball as you're going into it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But too many of us, we just wait for the bank to tell you, tell me, oh no, you're declined, or 
here you're approved, but at this higher rate because of ABC, right? Yeah. And again, yeah, I could yeah. have gotten a much better rate had I known how to prepare my profile. So again, you know, part of what we want to be able to do for you out there um, here, you know, at Life 180 is, you know, assist you with the credit assessment as a part of the debt strategy because they come yeah. hand in hand, right? And that's why Chris yeah. is asking these questions is because yeah. you can't just look at your debts without looking at your credit. And if you're looking at being, you know, uh, financially and uh, efficient, then you we have to take into consideration that credit is a game that we have to play, right? It's a part yeah. of, you know, unless you're gonna save up $200,000 to buy a house, most of us need to get a mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. um, most of us need to get a car loan, right? Uh -huh. So even if you're not uh -huh. going to play the credit card game, you're still going to yeah. have to leverage debt at some point, which means that you right. have to have good credit, right? I've totally. seen so many people that come to me for loans, Chris, that they tell me, yeah, you know, I'm old school and I never ah, got any credit, nice. right? And, you know, I have this business for 10 years. Look how well my business is doing. Look yeah. at my cash flow. My and I'm like, that's great. I look at the credit, nothing. So they have like a 600 credit score. But, yeah, let's let's talk like I, I actually I dealt with that at one point in time. I mean, back in the day when I was playing poker for a living, it was a fully cash business, right? Like I, I didn't have credit for anything. I paid cash for everything. I didn't. So I always say that one of the reasons I'm so passionate about doing what I do now is because like if I had known back then what I know now, life would be a lot different. Right. And it's yeah. like I just like to educate people to this stuff. My, my I guess one of the questions that I have for you on the business side is. What happens like if you are that business person and that you've had your business for 10 years and, um, you know, you've had your business card or you've done this or you've done that. Like, but from what I gather, you got to like go and set up your Dun & Bradstreet number. You got to do a, a, like some of these things. What happens if you have like a couple lines of credit uh, on your business and you're personally guaranteed and stuff like that and you've never like gone and set up the Dun & Bradstreet number? Can you do that? And does it like go into play retroactively? Or is it only like you got to start from scratch? Yeah. So it doesn't go into play retroactively. And I'm glad you brought this up um, because there's a lot of YouTube gurus out there that have their own personal experience as far as business mm -hmm. credit's concerned. Um, yep. And you're going to hear different perspectives. Okay. Some people are going to say you don't need to build business credit, like doing, you know, building up a profile with Dun and Bradstreet. Don't do that. It's a waste of time. You can get approved for business credit cards and you don't need to do that. And guess what? They're right. You can get approved for business to? credit cards without building up a business credit profile because yeah. business credit cards primarily look at your personal credit. Mm -hmm. If you have good business credit, you'll get bigger approvals, but it's not going to stop you from getting approvals if you have good personal sure. credit, right? right. So, yep. but but the, the problem with their perspective is that it's limited to their experience, which is mm. solely focused on getting credit cards, right? Yeah. Credit cards yeah. are not the answer to everything in, in life. Ah, yeah, right? totally. And there's yeah. a limit to how much you can get on credit cards, right? Mm -hmm. I'm helping people get up to $5 million with SBA 7A loans. If you're an established existing business, there's there's a score called the SBSS score, right? They mm. look at it after two years. The SBSS score is the it's the SBA's small business scoring system, which is based on okay. FICO. There's a third party yeah. called the Small Business Financial Exchange. They mm -hmm. collect data from Dun and Bradstreet. Mm -hmm. Experian has a business credit bureau. Equifax has a business credit bureau. Right. Mm. So they collect data mm -hmm. from these three uh, bureaus and they look at your personal credit. They put it all mm -hmm. together and they form a, a, an SBA score, which okay. is from one to uh, zero to 300. Right. If you don't have at least a 160 business credit score, you can't get that loan. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. Okay. If you have like, let's say, an 800 personal credit score and you have no business credit at all that personal credit score will lift up that SBSS score where you, you might still pass that test and have a 165 or 170 SBSS okay. score, right? Yep. But if you have, let's say you're lagging or you're dragging down in like a 730 to 750, which is still good credit, it's just not excellent credit, right? Okay. You may need to have some true business credit on Experian and Dun & Bradstreet 
to lift up that SBSS score. So for the guy out there on YouTube who's telling people that you shouldn't build your business credit, it's a waste of time, unfortunately, you're, you're speaking a half truth based on your limited mm -hmm. experience in business financing and what type okay. of is available, right? Got it. Yeah, yeah. Here's another scenario. You can buy vehicles, cars, with no personal guarantee. None. Okay. No so PG. as long as you have a good business credit. You have, but to do that, you have to have not just a good business credit profile, you have to have an excellent business growth, business credit profile. Okay. That's going to take about 12 months to build that kind of business credit profile from start to finish. It's going to take about 12 to 15 what are called vendor or business trade lines to report okay. on your business credit profile with Dun & Bradstreet and Experian and Equifax. Business credit, mm. right? Okay. But with that kind of profile, there's several banks that you can go to and you can finance $100,000 of a vehicle with no personal guarantee. Do you know what that means? It means it doesn't show up on your personal credit. There's no personal liability. It's a 100% business asset, right? Which means you're mm -hmm. paying for it out of the business, you're using it in the yep. business, it becomes a business yep. tax deduction, right? Yeah, which is great. Because it's not on your personal credit, your debt to income ratio stays low. So when you wanna go buy a house or another personal asset, your, your personal credit and debt yep. to income ratio is not affected, right? But to the guy who says, you don't need to build your business credit, how about buying a car in the business name? Yes, you do need to build your business credit, right? So the, the, yep. the key is to be holistic and approach things from a holistic approach and also to identify that you don't know when you're gonna need to use personal credit or business credit. Um, and so if you're prepared, for the opportunity when it presents itself, you're gonna be able to take advantage of it. That makes sense? That's awesome. Well, so guys, I mean, yeah, it makes total sense and it's amazing. Um, I would say, you know, like this is, it's, we're, I mean, I guess we've gotten a little off track. I mean, it's all kind of tied to it, right? Like this is like the bonus side of the video, I suppose, right? Because- It is. <laughs> this is. This is supposed to be infinite banking versus velocity banking, but at the end of the day, uh, that the, the the context of 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 the or the paradigm of that conversation is really evolved around like, all right, what's the most efficient way to pay off debt? What tools do you have at your disposal? And so we're just like, we've just gone like ten x on this video. I yeah, guess that's it's really all, other, all we've done. Right, you know, a, whole, a whole different a great thing. value, you know. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. That's but awesome. the, the, it's important it. because the the thing is that you know if you are going to practice um, velocity banking then mm -hmm. you need to be able to get qualified and approved for a line of credit. Well, that was my next question for you. Cause like, I mean, you must run into this a lot cause I don't coach people with debt, right? Like you do this a lot. Um, like how often do you run into people that, you know, usually a lot of people with a lot of debt don't have good credit and can't qualify right. for a lot of lines of credit. So how, what do you do in that scenario? Yeah. So then we have to start at being efficient at building credit. Some, sometimes we need to rebuild. So that when you're looking at someone's credit profile, and it's a low credit score, there's only three reasons why. Number one, they have derogatory issues. Derogatory issues are yep. late payments, collections, bankruptcies, things like that, right? Yep. The only way to resolve that is either time or credit repair, right? Um, credit repair is not a guarantee. It is an uphill battle, but it's a battle that's worth fighting because otherwise damage can stay on your credit profile for seven to 10 years. It's yeah. especially heavy for the first three to four years. The next reason is that you have high utilization, high, mm -hmm. high credit, specifically credit card utilization. Now, there could mm -hmm. be a solution to that, which could be a bridge, like a term loan of sorts mm -hmm. to pay down the credit cards, right? Got so it. even if mm -hmm. your scores are not great, um, you can still potentially get a term loan where you're basically shifting the balance from the credit cards to a loan, to one single mm -hmm. loan with a lower monthly payment, and you freed up all the credit card balances so your credit score goes higher. Because you're, you're, yep. you're, having that loan is not gonna affect your score as much as yep. it is with the high credit card balances, right? Okay. Um, yep. And then the third scenario is you just don't have any credit. You don't have enough. You need to build credit. You need to create yep. and build credit, and there are ways to do that efficiently 
um, mm-hmm. and quickly that didn't yeah. exist five or 10 years ago. Um, okay. There's a lot of fintech products out there now. Even Experian just created a product. These are like basically debit cards and other products that when you run your transactions through them, they connect to your bank account mm-hmm. and they they post the transactions to the credit bureau like as if it was a loan. No way. Yeah, so there's ways to build credit with if you have bad credit, you can't qualify for a credit card. And that and that's a, that's the problem that people have faced in the past is that if mm-hmm. it, if you don't have good credit, you can't get approved for credit. And the only way you can build credit is by getting credit. So you're stuck. Mm-hmm. Right? But these accounts, they don't require credit. They're not guaranteed. There's no credit check. You just get a, a it's basically a debit or a charge card. There's a there's a few of them. I have a list of them. Mm-hmm. Um and some of them report to different bureaus. And simply by using your checking account, but connecting that card to the account, uh-huh. it, it, it records and reports those transactions to the credit bureaus, which builds up your credit profile. There's wow. even one where it's like a savings account. So you're saving money. And then by putting money into the savings account, it reports those savings payments to the credit bureau as if it was a loan. So it builds the credit. Uh-huh. So there's some strategic ways to build credit, right? That's awesome. So we got to build good credit. We got to build yep. the credit. That's like at yep. the beginning, right? And if you're yep. trying to get out of debt, we have to focus on, okay, building the credit and uh, paying off the debt, mm-hmm. right? So again, we're talking about someone who's in a tough spot, bad credit, bad debt. You know, what do we focus on first? Um, mm-hmm. Depending on your cash flow, we we may need to focus on reducing the credit card balances to increase the credit score so that we can get access to a line of credit so that we can leverage that to pay off debt right if you have enough cash flow then we may look at a different strategy which would be which could include a high cash value line of credit leveraging a whole life insurance policy because Mm -hmm. now we can leverage that and and have a longer play in uh you know an end game of building up uh the compound interest growth over that time but still leveraging the cash yeah. value to pay off the debt right and this is where working with somebody like you is so key because you can kind of consult and coach and like you've got all the experience of all the different ways to do it and you know the different products for the different scenarios the different strategies and the different time frames and ways to kind of pay down different accounts and and strategies to increase your credit through the process. That way you can take advantage of all the different tools. You know, like if you think about it, like a ladder or a staircase, as you're going up the staircase, trying to pay this down, when you hit different levels, different tools become available to you. So the goal is to get up that staircase as fast as possible. Maybe you're not paying the debt off at the same speed, but it opens up tools for you. So maybe you're slower at the beginning, but then you qualify for a tool. So boom, it goes faster. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And so that's exactly. all part of the plan. So, mm-hmm. all right, well, we're getting pretty long. So what have we not covered that we need to cover based on the title? I, so I think we're probably going to have to I chop apologize. this up into at least two or three videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, yeah. this has been cool. I think, I think this is a, uh, like one of three kind of situated, like we'll probably do three videos. Yeah. Um, if you're watching this right now, this is your probably being, yeah, I'm on number three right now. And yeah. so, um, so I, I think, yeah. so let's, let's go back to, you know, let's define what velocity banking is because yeah. I, I think that needs to be clear. Um, yeah. What is it? How does that differ from these other strategies? Right. Yeah. Um, and then let's just then, you know, understand, okay, if I do this, can I do this and velocity and infinite banking or should mm-hmm. I do infinite banking? Um, Love it. Or, you know, let's call it, you know, leveraging cash a, value life. a cash value line of we'll credit. We'll call it cash flow hacking. We'll call it cash yeah, flow hacking. Yeah, let's cash flow hack, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. So here, let, let me go back to my my uh, Love it. little presentation. And guys, I promise I'm going to shut up now and let him do his presentation. I, I just can't <laughs> help it. I have all these questions and I like, I you know, when I hear something, I just want to keep adding value and ask <laughs> questions and give you more information and like all this stuff. But like, I got to just shut up and let him do his thing. Let's go. All right. So. Debt snowball is basically the premise is to pay off the lowest balance debt first so that you get rid of that debt. Um, and that's going to give you some feeling of accomplishment and psychologically helps to motivate you to move to the next debt and continue to snowball. But the reason it works is because there's a compound effect here, right? 
um, which is that you take when you pay off that first debt, you take the the money that you were using to pay that first debt, that bill or that amount, and then you reallocate that to the next debt. That's why it actually becomes so effective because you're not just paying off one debt, but you're you're one at debt at a time. But as you pay off debt, you're going to continue to use the same money and just repurpose it to the next debt, right? Mm-hmm. So you're not going to just pay the minimum on the next one. You're you're gonna. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. All right. So so that's that snowball. It's really just f- focusing on the lowest balance, right? So then the next strategy. It, this is these are all debt snowball strategies, by the way. But the next strategy is avalanche. It says okay, let's focus on uh, the interest rate, right? List all debts mm-hmm. by the by interest rate, highest to lowest, and then you're going to attack the debt with the highest interest rate. That's mm. debt avalanche, right? Now this next strategy is probably the most efficient outside of velocity banking, um, and that's going to be okay. cash flow indexing. And basically there. You figure, okay, what is the loan balance? You divide that by your minimum monthly payment, and that gives you a cash flow index number. And then whichever loan has the lowest cash flow index number is the one that you should pay off first. It doesn't matter what the interest rate is on the loan. The most important thing is how efficient it is, which is what the cash flow index measures. So the the key here is to increase the maximum cash flow and and pay off the debt that's going to release that for you. And then Got it. you're going to continue to snowball by moving to the next debt, right? Um, mm-hmm. So what velocity banking is, the premise of it is that you're going to be leveraging a debt, which is going to be a line of credit to eliminate debt faster than you would if you were just doing a debt snowball. So technically, you in velocity banking, you're still debt snowballing, you're still debt avalanching or cash flow indexing, right? But you're just using a line of credit to do it. Um, and so you're, you're basically assigning multiple, um, multiple purposes for, for your dollar instead of just one purpose, which is to pay off the debt. You're, you're doing two things at the same time. And then if you include a cash value line of credit, now you you you're giving that dollar at least five or six purposes versus just two. Um, so for velocity banking to work, or what it's doing is it's it's strategically paying off debt, accumulating interest, floating interest, canceling interest, and you're practicing the compound credit effect that we talked about. So all of that is happening in, in velocity. Love it. Um, and so basically, number one is you always underestimate your income and your cash flow and you overestimate expenses. You li- list all debts by the balance and interest rate, highest to mm-hmm. lowest, if that's mm-hmm. your strategy you, you can do cash flow indexing in terms of your order of payments um, yeah but you're gonna make lump sum payments to the debt that increases cash flow and saves you the most interest and as soon yeah. as possible you get access to a line of credit to use as a mean of paying off your debt even faster and that line of credit can be a credit card a personal line of credit business line of credit a home equity line of credit and or a cash value line of credit right now you may look at uh, uh, the strategy and say, okay, well, the personal line of credit I'm getting here, the interest rate is 7% or 8%. Why would I mm-hmm. use a 7% or 8% interest line of credit to pay off a debt that has, let's say, 5 or 6% interest? That doesn't make sense. It's, high, it's more interest, right? Well, mm-hmm. the reason why is because of the amateurized schedule that you pay um, on debts like car loans, student loans, mortgages. Because of the amortized schedule of that debt, you actually pay much more interest in the long run. And I'm sure you you know you understand that, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and so if, if you don't understand that, if you're watching this, basically what happens with amortized debt is that it's front loaded where you're you're paying the interest first and you don't touch principal. So that's why a 30 year mortgage, if you look in the small print in the on the mortgage note it it will say that the interest rate is probably like a hundred percent it's there Uh. it's in the small print but the apr the annual percentage rate they're selling you is it used to be three and four percent now it's seven and eight percent because of the prime rate right um but even if it was a three or four percent 
um, APR, then on an amortized schedule, you're not paying three or four percent. You're paying double, triple that over time because you're base you're basically paying for that mortgage twice. You're paying the bank first, and then you're buying the property second, right? Got it. So, yep. With a line of credit, a line of credit does not have an amortized schedule. And it's a revolving account. So the premise is you simply take your your income, all of your Mm -hmm. income, this is the premise, and you place that income into the line of credit. And so if the balance on the line of credit required a minimum monthly payment, by you putting all of your income in there, it pays for that minimum monthly, but it pushes Mm. that average daily balance down. So what's being calculated on the interest is much lower than what the actual balance is. Uh, So versus instead of paying an eight or 7% interest rate, you may be paying one or 2% interest. If you do this properly, you can avoid interest completely. Wow. And then what you do is you pay your expenses and your debts and your, you know, you live through the line of credit basically. Right. So you take a lump sum from the line of credit and you dump it into a debt. You dump it into a mortgage, into a car payment. So let's just say you get a hundred thousand dollar line of credit, a HELOC. Right. And you have a a fifty thousand dollar car loan. Right. You would take a portion of it. And there's an algorithm here that we have to figure out that makes sense based on your cash flow. Right. So this is Mm -hmm. not just something you do. You have to get proper coaching and guidance to do this properly. Right. Um, Or you have to get the algorithm to figure out what's the right amount so that you don't over chunk. You don't over um, pay the debt off by taking too much out of the line of credit. Right. So there's a there's a Mm -hmm. there's a balance between how much cash flow you have and the size of the line of credit and the debt that you're going to pay that you chunk meaning a lump sum that gets paid to that one debt. So you do that one time, whatever that chunk is, whether it's the car loan that you're going to try to pay off or the mortgage that you're going to pay off or or whatever it is. But typically, amortized interest debt is what you want to attack with velocity Mm -hmm. banking, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to put your income into that line of credit. So by again, by doing that, you're pushing that average daily balance down. And then for the next 6 to 12 months, you don't pay extra. You just pay the minimum payments and you continue to put your income in the line of credit. So what's going to happen over the next 6 to 12 months is you're going to pay back that line of credit. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to chunk it again. So now what normally would have taken 30 years or 10 years gets reduced to 5 or 7 years. It just gets reduced dramatically because of the ch- the power of the lump sum transfer you're shifting the debt from one mm-hmm. to the other and because it's a simple interest line of credit and you're pushing that average daily balance down you're, mm-hmm. you're paying it off quicker re- avoiding the interest yeah. on it yeah. and the effective interest rate back. becomes much less exactly yep. that, that's, that's velocity awesome. banking that is that's amazing velocity so it's very powerful. It's not for everybody. It doesn't right. work in every circumstance. Based on your cash flow, it mm. it might not be the best thing. You might you, sh- you some folks need to start with that snowball, whether it's that avalanche or cash flow index, right? And that's well, where they need to sit. The key is to run the numbers and see what makes sense based on your profile, yeah. not just to yeah, do so- it because it sounds sexy. Ah, yeah, right. So let me ask you this then. So to me, it seems like velocity banking is also something that even when you get out of debt and you're like debt free, it's still a way that you can increase your financial efficiency from a long term perspective. And so it's it becomes a lifestyle and like a behavior of money Correct. becomes like you're you're almost like your um, like your money personality becomes like velocity banking is your personality Correct. with it. Right. Correct. Like in how you behave with it. So then it's not either or infinite banking or velocity banking. It's how like at that point in time, once you have it in place, now putting fuel on the fire is adding in a properly designed cash value life insurance policy. You got it. Exactly. 
Exactly. Ta da! It only took us an hour and a half to get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, 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 the credit conversation was important. So, yeah, it was. It was. It was. Maybe we could figure out how to splice it all, whatever. Yeah. But no, yeah. hopefully, hopefully everybody's finding value in this because this is like, this is important stuff, like really, really important stuff. And, um, you know, as, as is like, I'm never trying to on this channel, trying to make fast videos. If it's gotta be long to do it right, we're going to do it long. And, um, nothing, as you could tell, as always, nothing is scripted here. We didn't come into this knowing exactly what this is going to be like. It was literally just like, how do we, how do we have a conversation and add as much value as possible to everybody watching? And hopefully, uh, that connected. So is there, is there anything else? I think we've covered it. No, I think that's it. So it's not necessarily a question of, uh, infinite banking versus velocity banking. It's and. but how can we do both at the same time? Or how and how quickly what's can the we order get of to operation? Exactly. Yeah, and what's the order of operations, right? Like that's the key. And that's going to be based on each individual's current circumstances, and then of course, okay. what are their short term mm -hmm. and long term mm -hmm. goals? Okay. So here's what I'll say, guys. If you are interested, I'm gonna I'm gonna set up. There's a link down below. It's for debt elimination. If you go down below and you set up a call for debt elimination, I will set you up with Sebastian personally. So you can connect with him, talk with him, uh, and he can do all of his magic with you personally. We offer a free consultation for you to be able to have that down. He can walk you through what your options are, get some information, give you clarity on what's going on with you uh, for your situation, uh, add some value into your life. And then if it makes sense to work together, then you'll work together. And if not, then you'll at least learn something. So win-win all the way around. Um, that's it, man. I appreciate you being here. This is uh, a lot of fun. We should do this more often. Let's do it. And uh, all right. Well, rock and roll, guys. And uh, uh, just once again, I know I started with this, but go down in the link in the description below. If you found value in this, go go follow his channel. I'll watch him. I'll put uh, links to all his, all his content, all his social channels. Definitely a wealth of knowledge, uh, as you can tell to go learn from and we only scratch the surface in this video. So I'm sure we'll be doing more videos, but I'm about all talked out for today. So that is it guys. Hope you have a blessed inspirational day. Seb, thanks again. And we uh, will see you guys on the next video. Take care.